Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Mike Kapler here with Richie yowza. Cunningham over there, also known as the alias of Joel Brzezinski. <laughs> Richie Cunningham. <laughs> I'm more an Opie. You remember when... Uh, he, uh, on Happy Days, uh, Richie did Yowza, 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 Yowza. He had all those that, catchphrases. That just popped into my head. Yep, and I found my thrill. And he would do that one, and um, uh, and there was one that just hit my mind, and now it's lost. But yeah, I used to love Happy Days. That was one of the <clears throat> things as a, as a teenager, well, as a kid, as a kid, I would watch that. You know, um... I grew up in the 70s uh, for the most part, and um, when Happy Days was on, which of course was a show about the, the 1950s, I used to think that, that man, that was a lifetime ago. When it was really <laughs> only about 20 years. Right, yeah. But it, was just, it just seemed so long ago because that's when my mom was growing up. Uh, right. And um, now the 70s are 40 years later. <laughs> well, yeah, and it was like, I was just reading this too, like the the Wonder Years, when the Wonder Years was on. It was based, I think that was in the 80s, and it was based in the 60s. And, uh, late 60s, yeah. yeah. And, and they have, so that would have been about um, 20 years, yeah. And they have a new Wonder Years, which I haven't seen, but with Dulé Hill from um, from Psych. But, uh, and that was based 20 years ago, which doesn't seem that long ago. But yet when the original Wonder Years came out, that was a, that was a lifetime ago. It's like, yeah, it's just weird how that happens. It's a, it's a, I guess it's a good marketing <laughs> thing uh, to go back about 20 years or so because now so. you've, you've kind of got your prime target TV audience wanting to kind of go back and reminisce from their younger days, right? Well, well wasn't wasn't MASH is that way too? I mean, that was 70s, right? 70s. Well, MASH was and uh, based on in the, the 70s, 50s. and it was the Korean War, yeah. so it would have been, you know, early 50s. Early 50s, yeah. 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 So, I don't know, maybe... Maybe in three years, when we reach our 20-year mark here, we can go back and start doing this as if it was 2005. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess we just reminisced uh, from 17 years ago. Well, because you think some... about it. I was going to bring this up during the um, anniversary show, and I totally forgot about it, but it popped in my mind now. But you know who was president when we started our podcast? Yeah, we could have we could have done a whole bunch of those sort of things. Of course, yeah. I know who it was. Yeah, but you just I mean, two thousand five. Okay, George W. Bush had just started his second term. So I mean, it it just it just it's like four presidents ago. Yeah, but so anyway, this you know, there's no point to be made there other than wow. I mean, you, how time flies, and you just um, presidents come and go, and then. Um, here we are doing uh, this podcast. I know. I mean, even now we have one that comes and goes, but that's another story. <laughs> that's... Um, all right. Sorry about that one. Um, the end of Hebrews 9, where we left off here, Joel, on, on, on this theme that we've been on regarding forgiveness within the new covenant. You had kind of gotten to the point where Jesus would have had to repeatedly sacrifice himself if his blood didn't put sin away once and for all. Um, because that's how it was under the old covenant. There was blood, but it didn't put sin away. It had to keep being repeated. More sins occurred. Uh, more blood needed to be shed. But the blood didn't take the sins away. Um, it was it was something that was going to lead up to the real deal. Jesus Christ, the cross, and the resurrection. And so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are e eagerly waiting for him. So I remember uh, a when I was a kid, I remember a legalistic ministry was always splashing Hebrews 9.27 around, and, and it's this. And just as is it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment, you kind of talked about this a little bit last week, but at the end of the show, but they used to just pluck that one out, mm -hmm. and and then they would 
uh, they would talk about how uh, you're going to stand before the, the throne of judgment and God would decide whether you were good enough or not to let you in. <laughs> right. That's what they did. Uh-huh. That's what they did. They, you know, they had a big movie screen up there reviewing your life. Now, how long would that take for everybody, by the way? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. We're going to spend the rest of eternity just watching everybody's lives up on the big screen here. Um, and, and after that comes the judgment, but go on to see what, so he, so there's a comma there. There's not a period. So Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many will appear a second time, not to deal with sin. Why? Because it's been dealt with. Thank goodness for that, right? Thank the Lord for that, because we all have our shortcomings and failures. We still do, whether you're an unbeliever who's never called upon Christ or you're a believer who has, we all are in that same boat. That's why the beauty of this is that the the cross got the job done. It didn't fall short. I think sometimes we often, without coming out and saying it in this many words, and I know people don't mean to do this, but to keep seeking repeated forgiveness from God is basically saying Uh, The blood of the cross was insufficient. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if you're seeking more forgiveness from God, guess what? There's no more blood being shed. Are you connecting the dots here just a little bit, maybe, as we talk some of these things out? Because we've been in Hebrews before. Joel and I love the book of Hebrews. We try to bring some things to light that you're not going to hear in church and, and try to make this a much more understandable letter to read. As you said, Joel, it was directed at that time that it was written. It was directed to people who would have been familiar under the first covenant, under the law. It was written to those Jewish people. But it, it enlightens us today, even, as even even non-Jewish people who, who saw how this all, who could now look back and see how this all played out. We can see how it, how it all came to be the way that it, it turned out. And, and so this is what's so exciting about this, though, is that there's no more blood being shed relating to sin and the need for more forgiveness. Um, so when we keep saying, God, please forgive me over and over again, um, just be thankful that forgiveness has arrived. It came through Jesus. It came through one sacrifice for all, the shedding of blood one time. And it brought so much to so many of us, not just the Jewish people who were stuck under a law. Remember what Galatians says? Jesus was born of a woman. He was born under the law because the law was still in effect at that time. And why why was this the case? Why was Jesus born of a woman? Why was he born under the law? He did it so that he could redeem those Jewish people who were under that law. He came to bring redemption from that ministry of death and, and condemnation and bondage. That's what it was. And they were set free. We who were never under it, the Gentiles, uh, we have been invited into the house. We've been, you know, because the, that wall that was keeping us from God and it was keeping us from having a covenant with God, that, that was torn down. The law was torn down. It was made obsolete. It was abolished. Yes. Yeah. Ephesians 2 and Colossians 2 say so much about that. And uh, Galatians and. You know, you were talking about how this um, one verse taken out of context, and it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment, period, which it's not really a period there, but you go on to read again. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. That's the point there. Similar thing happens in Romans 3. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And a lot of times that will just be quoted just all by itself. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And, you know, okay, so what do we do about that? Well, read on, because right after that it says, you know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. (laughs) And he goes on with more of the good news. It's just one of these things where we get our focus on one little verse or we just take a part of a sentence out and make that to be the point and and you miss what's really being said here. But so like you were saying, um, if there's going to be any more forgiveness, then more blood is going to have to be shed. Now under the old covenant, blood was shed over and over and over again, the blood of animals. But it never took away sin. 
But the one sacrifice of Christ, Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and through that one sacrifice, sin has been put away. Sin has been taken away. We've been forgiven. Christ secured eternal redemption for us. There's going to be no more bloodshed, and so there's going to be no more forgiveness handed out. The forgiveness for your lifetime of sins was provided 2,000 years ago on the cross. Your past sins, your present sins, your future sins, this is how some people word it, all taken away through the blood of Jesus. It's really simple. His blood was shed once, and it took away all of your sins. There's nothing that you could do to have your past sins taken away. There's nothing you can do if you're involved in something now, and there's nothing for the sins that you're going to commit in the future. There's nothing that you can do about it. It was all accomplished. It was all taken away through the blood of Jesus. And so the writer continues on here, for the law having a shadow, moving into chapter 10, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things. So there was one time I, I was I used to be a courier and I was out on the highway and I noticed, you know, the sun, it was near sunset and I noticed a long shadow from the van that I was driving. So I stopped and I, I took a picture of that shadow and I think I posted it on social media. I said something about how you see that shadow over there. That's not my van. That's, that's the, I am in the van. The substance of that shadow is, is the van. That shadow that you see over there is not the reality. The same thing here with the law. The law was a shadow of the good things to come. It's not the substance. It's not the very image of the things. And it can never, with these same sacrifices, again, the animal sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, it cannot make those who approach perfect. For would they not have ceased to be offered? If they could have made people perfect, if they could have provided forgiveness, they would not be offered anymore. For the worshipers, once purified, would have no more consciousness of sins. So if their sin would have been taken away, if their sins would have been taken away, they would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Too bad for the Jewish people. So sad. That's the end of the story. No, Christ came and shed his blood once for all. Mm-hmm. You know, I mentioned a few minutes ago that, yes, we've, we've been in the book of Hebrews a, a number of times, and, and there's a lot of things that we kind of hatch over throughout the years. Uh, but, you know, the thing, the thing I want to point out about that, Joel, is that there are so many different ways to look at these things, so, different, so many different perspectives that we can uh, get a, a new point of view, a, a, a new look, um, and, and gain a greater understanding of the truth coming to a greater understanding of the knowledge of the truth. And that's why we, we keep going through these things. And, you know, we were talking there at the end of uh, Hebrews 9, those last couple of verses there. Keep reading. Don't just stop on a verse sometimes. You just need to keep reading. Well, this is a whole new chapter that you started, Hebrews 10, but it's not a different topic. Right. <laughs> I mean, he starts out with the word for. So he's, he's following up on what he's continually been saying, not just over the last few verses, but really over the last few chapters in, in this particular book anyway, this particular letter. Uh, and so this is awesome stuff, you see, because he mentioned some of this back in, in Hebrews 9, that the law, the sacrifice of many animals, the shedding of much blood, it couldn't help people with their consciousness of sins, whereas what Jesus did with the one sacrifice could do that. Theoretically then, for those of us even today uh, who believe in Christ and have come to the the saving knowledge of, of Jesus, because Jesus really is the substance. That's what Paul said somewhere else. Jesus Christ is the substance. He's not the shadow. And, and what he has brought us is a freedom from the consciousness uh, of sins. Mm-hmm. But in the old way, there was a reminder of sins all the time. That's the way it worked under that ministry. We're under a very different ministry. And the problem, uh, I think, in churchianity sometimes is that people will take a small portion of that old ministry and try to blend it into some sort of a new covenant mixture. And it just leaves people in the same similar type of bondage that many of the Jewish people were under during that first covenant. Yeah, it was, it's bondage. 
and too many believers today are living in bondage uh, because we don't understand these these differences in the covenants and, and in the, the security of the forgiveness that we have in Christ. So we'll pick up on more of this next week on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.